Virginia Beach City Public School students will have to wait a little longer before coming back to campus. The school board voted just hours ago to phase in the first group of students next month, so long as COVID metrics drop in the city. According to a slide from the meeting, option one pre-K through sixth grade students and some special education students will resume in-person learning February 1st, but only if community COVID positivity rates show a decline for seven days and campuses meet all mitigation strategies. The decision came at the end of an eight hour meeting that included six hours of public comment. Superintendent Dr. Aaron Spence had initially hoped to send students back to the classroom on January 19th. However, he said due to a rise in school-related COVID cases and the continued post-holiday COVID surge in the community, he did not feel confident in the district's ability to keep up with contact tracing. Spence said that's a key component in the plan to return students to school safely. Before the meeting, parents and students gathered outside the administration building as they advocated for schools to reopen. We care for teachers, we want teachers to be safe, but we feel like the board has focused too much on what the teachers want and not what the students need. You know, until the kids are in the building, the fight's not over. The district will continue consulting with the health department on future decisions. Teachers in Chesapeake can get their first COVID-19 vaccine starting today. The city is still technically in phase 1A of vaccination. That does not include teachers. However, the health department is more than halfway through administering phase 1A vaccines. So it started integrating portions of phase 1B. That includes teachers. Almost 700 people signed up to get the first dose of the Moderna vaccine today. Chesapeake is the first school district in Hampton Roads to offer voluntary vaccines to staff. Happening today, the Virginia General Assembly convenes to kick off the 2021 legislative session. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the House of Delegates will meet virtually. The state Senate will be at the Science Museum of Virginia. For now, the session is set to be just 30 days long. Republicans do not support a 15-day extension. Governor Ralph Northam has suggested he could step in to lengthen the session if necessary. An extension would give Democrats more time to push through a jam-packed agenda before elections later this year could possibly jeopardize the party's sweeping power. During this legislative session, state lawmakers will consider a student driving safety bill. Delegate Martha Mugler proposed it. She represents part of the peninsula. If passed, the legislation would require students to have a valid license in order to get parking passes at schools. It would also increase driver's education for 10th graders. Delegate Mugler says she's optimistic the bill will pass. Governor Ralph Northam will deliver his State of the Commonwealth address today. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the governor will speak from the House Chamber of the Virginia State Capitol before a virtual joint session of the General Assembly. It's set to begin tonight at 7. We plan to live stream it on the Wavy Facebook page, Wavy News app, and Wavy.com. You can also find full coverage tonight on Wavy News 10 at 10 and 11. 636, we have more to come on Wavy News 10 today. That includes an odd turn of events in Portsmouth. Why a city council appointed and then unappointed a city manager? And what happens next as officials work to permanently fill the position? Plus, a new leader in Hampton who's taking over as interim sheriff until the November election.
Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast with meteorologist Steve Fundero. Good morning, folks. We've been talking about the freezing fog this morning, and if you're dealing with any lowered visibility in some of our interior locations, northeast or North Carolina, just do take it easy. Use some extra caution because not only is it just fog and lowering the visibility, but potentially freezing rather quickly on any surfaces, causing some slick spots. So just something really to keep in mind. We're really watching just some denser patchy of that freezing fog out towards Franklin, Wakefield, Southampton, uh, Suffolk. Isle of Wight, northeastern North Carolina. So this is a little bit ambitious on the on the models here, but by late morning, 9, 10 a.m., really we see visibility improve, and then we're off and racing to a nice day. So this is really just the one speed bump in the road we have in, before we have a nice day today. If you're not dealing with the visibility issues, you're dealing with the frost and the chill at or below freezing right now. Warm spot back bay at 37. We'll be in the 30s through late morning into the 40s by noon and then low 50s this afternoon. Looks pretty nice. Lynn Haven Inlet, the sun is starting to come up. We're getting a whole lot of that sunshine this afternoon. Low to mid 50s pretty much anywhere you go with a whole lot of sunshine. Low 50s on the peninsula as well. Not much of a breeze, so pretty calm condition. Sets up a mild night tonight. More sunshine and near 60 on Thursday. Let's get a look at the roadways now with Madison. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we just got this information in from a Newport News dispatch. This is a crash involving a pedestrian uh, right on J. Clyde Morris Boulevard and Diligence Drive. The call came in for this about 20 minutes ago, so we're still working to learn more information about this. And as soon as we do, uh, we'll let you know. On the south side, uh, watching this crash here in Chesapeake on 64 East, right by Deep Creek Boulevard, just a shoulder is blocked off now. But still, you can see heavy delays there, extending back toward the high rise bridge. So give yourself some extra time or just take a South Military Highway as an alternate. Don? Madison, thank you. It is 641. Coming up all new this hour, one of the groups carefully weighing the risks and benefits of the COVID-19 vaccines is pregnant women what maternal doctors are encouraging their patients to do. Our time now is 644. We are following breaking news from Newport News. That's where police are on the scene of an accident. Madison Glassman just mentioned this in her last traffic report.
Dispatchers tell us a car hit a pedestrian at J. Clyde Morris Boulevard and Diligence Drive. The call came in just before 620. We are still working to find out how badly the victim was hurt and if police plan to file any charges against the driver. Of course, we are going to continue to follow this breaking story throughout the morning. We'll send you any updates through the Wavy News app. 644 now for a short time last night, Portsmouth had a new city manager, former council member Danny Meeks. But just as quickly, city council unappointed him. It's just the latest round of Portsmouth drama. Meeks didn't even apply for the position. The city has been paying a consultant more than $22,000 to help permanently fill. Now, four council members initially voted to appoint Meeks. That included Councilman Paul Battle. Battle said Meeks is a successful businessman whose heart is in the city. However, Mayor Shannon Glover and two others said Meeks doesn't even meet the educational qualifications and appointing him wouldn't be fair to all the other applicants. This is not about personal vendettas, and this is not about personal politics. This is about the executive officer, the chief executive officer of the city of Portsmouth, and I will not stand by and let that be made a mockery of. Well, after a brief closed session, Councilman Bill Moody requested a revote where the council unanimously unappointed Meeks. Council then voted to reopen the application process for another week. While that saga will continue, it appears the legal battle over the Portsmouth City Jail is over. Portsmouth City Council voted unanimously last night to stop trying to force the sheriff to move all inmates from the city jail to Hampton Roads Regional Jail. Since July of 2019, the two sides have been going back and forth regarding the fate of the waterfront property. Both sides say the current jail needs to be torn down and relocated from the waterfront. However, an agreement on how to make it happen has not been reached. Mayor Shannon Glover is hopeful both sides will be able to come up with a plan soon. New this morning, the Hampton Sheriff's Office is under new leadership. Under Sheriff Karen Bowden will serve as interim sheriff until the November election. This comes after Sheriff B.J. Roberts announced his retirement last month. He died just a few weeks later. Roberts was the longest serving sheriff in Virginia since 1992. Norfolk City Council has temporarily appointed a new member to represent Super Ward 7. 31-year-old Danica Royster will be sworn in today as City Council's youngest member. She'll serve in the position until a special election in May of 2022. Royster is a wealth consultant. She replaces Delegate-elect Angela Williams-Graves. You may remember Williams-Graves won the election for the Virginia House of Delegates 90th District earlier this month. Our time 647. The 59th presidential inauguration is one week away, and it will be held on the same risers in the same spot at the U.S. Capitol where a violent pro-Trump mob descended last week. The inauguration is de designated as a national special security event. It clears the way for communication, funding, and preparation between several agencies in Washington, D.C. Security experts believe what law enforcement has learned about the planning that went into last week's deadly riot at the Capitol could very well help in stifling a similar attack. Authorities in all 50 states are on alert after the FBI warned there could be violent protests at state Capitol buildings in the days leading up to Inauguration Day. There is online chatter the right-wing Boogaloo movement could be involved. The group's goal is to start another civil war. Here in Virginia, Richmond has declared a state of emergency because of credible threats. The Trump administration is asking states to speed up delivery of COVID-19 vaccines to people 65 and older and to others at high risk of contracting the virus by no longer holding back the second dose of the two-dose shots. Federal officials also want to open more vaccination locations and allocate more vaccines to states getting doses out the fastest. Uh, officials say that vaccine production is now at a point where the second dose of the two-shot vaccine can be released without jeopardizing immunization for those who got the first shot. New this morning, if you are pregnant, you may be wondering, should I get a COVID-19 vaccine? While there's not much data on how the vaccine affects pregnant and breastfeeding women, experts are encouraging them to roll up their sleeves for the shot. Lex Gray is live in the newsroom this morning with more on vaccine guidance for pregnant women. Lex? 
Well, Katie, pregnant and breastfeeding women were not included in clinical trials. Still, major organizations like the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists support vaccine use for those groups. That's because pregnant women are at a higher risk for having higher complications related to the virus, like hospitalization and needing ICU care. Dr. Amy Witten is a maternal and fetal medicine specialist. She says a majority of her healthcare worker colleagues who are pregnant and breastfeeding have gotten the vaccine if they've had the option. Dr. Witten urges women to talk about their personal risks and benefits with their doctors. My you know, guidance to my patients is that while the vaccine wasn't studied specifically in pregnant women, um, women who did become pregnant after receiving the vaccine had outcomes that were similar to those who were not vaccinated. The bottom line is pregnant women can choose to get the vaccine when they become eligible. Here's Madison Glassman. She's got breaking news in the traffic center. Thanks, Lex. Yeah, this breaking news coming out of Newport News. This is a crash involving a pedestrian on J. Clyde Morris Boulevard and Diligence Drive, so there are lane closures there in place. The call came in for this at about 620, so we're still working to learn more information about this, but also uh, I think because of this on 64 East, that exit ramp onto J. Clyde Morris Boulevard on 64 is completely blocked off as well. So just keep that in mind if you do need to travel that way. Across the south side, dealing with a crash in Chesapeake. I'm going to have more on that in about 10 minutes. But right now, let's take a look at your forecast. Meteorologist Steve Mondero. Yeah, Madison, those areas dealing with fog use extra caution because not only is the visibility lowered, Franklin, Wakefield, maybe up towards Surrey into Isle of Wight. So for some fog maybe developing in Chesapeake as well, northeastern North Carolina, but that fog will also potentially freeze, causing some slick spots. So we have the freezing fog advisor through 9 a.m. So by 9, 10 a.m., we will be seeing some improving conditions in terms of visibility, and then we're off and racing to a nice sunshine-filled day. Uh, the sun is coming up at the airport right now, and if you're not dealing with any areas of lowered visibility or fog, we just have the frost and the chill. So add a few extra minutes to the morning to heat up the car and make sure you got the heat on in the car when you're driving to work, using caution, of course, if you're dealing with any of the fog around, because they were in the 30s through 9, 10, 11 a.m. Into the 40s this afternoon by the noon hour or so, and then we got low 50s on the map for our highs today. Now by 11 a.m. most of the fog is gone and future track keeps everything quiet today. 4 p.m. nothing really going on. Maybe by the end of the day today a few high clouds stream on in. They'll just add some color to the sunset. So after a day when we get to the low 50s tomorrow morning we'll be in the 40s low 40s, upper 30s, so not as chilly as we're dealing with this morning, so more of a mild start for Thursday. That's when high pressure sinks in, and then we see temperatures climb to near 60 Thursday and Friday. So a brief little warm-up to finish this week's work week. Going to be short-lived, though, because we get back to the 40s this weekend as a cold front swings right on through late Friday night into Saturday, bringing in just a few showers around Saturday morning. Those should be confined to just the morning hours on Saturday as the temperatures will be in the 40s. We'll get back to some sunshine this weekend. So the weekend forecast still looks pretty good. We'll just wake up to some showers around on Sunday. So after the fog and the chill this morning, plenty of sun, low 50s to go around, more mild tonight near 40. Could be a few areas of fog developing, but don't expect it to be freezing fog because, again, we should be at least 8 to 10 degrees above that freezing mark. And then we see a warmer day for us on Thursday, near 60 with a whole lot of sunshine. And again, we'll welcome in some of those showers by the time the alarm clocks are going off on Saturday morning.
We're back at 655 and following breaking news on the roads in Newport News. This is a crash involving a pedestrian on J. Clyde Morris Boulevard and Diligence Drive. So we know two westbound lanes on J. Clyde Morris completely blocked off there. The call came in for this at about 620. We're still working to learn uh, more details about this, but I can tell you on 64 East that exit ramp onto J. Clyde Morris Boulevard uh, completely blocked off there. On the south side in Chesapeake, still watching this crash on 64 East, uh, right by Deep Creek Boulevard as you're heading toward the Bowers Hill Interchange. Just a shoulder is blocked off there. Uh, some minor delays still lingering there on 64 East. Let's go ahead and take a look at your forecast now with meteorologist Steve Fandero. Madison, we saw the freezing fog advisor through 9 a.m., so about two more hours. And then by 8, 9 a.m., really visibility starts to improve. We got a sunshine-filled day near 60 by Thursday and Friday. We still have so much to talk about over on Fox 43, and we sure hope you join us as we guide you through all the news, weather, and traffic. We'll be there from 7 to 9. Join us on Fox. Now, from the station on your side, you're watching Wavy News 10 on Fox 43. This president is not meeting the duties of office. Preparing to impeach. Today, one week after a violent pro-Trump mob attacked the U.S. Capitol, the House will vote on whether to impeach the president. Plus, another social media suspension. All new this morning, YouTube becomes the latest online platform to limit President Trump's posts. And reopening schools. 
Today, leaders with Norfolk Public Schools will meet to talk about a plan to bring students back to the classroom. Good Wednesday morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Don Roberts. And I'm Katie Collette. We made it to the middle of the work week, and we have a lot to talk about to help you kick off your day. First, we do want to get you ready to head out the door this morning. So let's begin with a check of the forecast with meteorologist Steve Fundero. Hey, Steve, what's happening? Don, we're still dealing with some of the freezing fog around, the frost around, a little chilly morning. Now, this is really our one speed bump and hurdle in the path, so to speak, uh, because we have really quiet weather for the rest of the day today, Thursday and Friday. So really just got to get through the chill this morning and the freezing fog. So we had that advisory until 9 a.m. and it was extended to include parts of the south side, Isle of Wight, Suffolk, out towards Southampton County as well. Majority of northeast and North Carolina dealing with some lowered visibility. So if you are encountering any of the fog, you see it before you head out on the roadways, uh, just use extra caution because with temperatures at or below freezing, the water droplets that are making up the fog can freeze instantly and cause some slick spots. If you're not dealing with any of the fog, you got some frost and you got a chill. 30s through late morning, eventually into the 40s by noon, and then high temperatures today, low 50s. Whole lot of sunshine today. This afternoon looks really nice. Awesome shot from Tower Cam 10. We'll talk about the rest of your forecast and a bit, a bit about that warm up coming by Thursday. But for now, let's get a look at the roadways with Madison. Good morning, Madison. Steve, thank you. Good morning. Still uh, following this uh, crash involving a pedestrian here in Newport News. This is on J. Clyde Morris Boulevard and Diligence Drive. So we know two westbound lanes there completely blocked it off. The call came in for this. Came in at about 620. Still working to learn if there's any injuries or uh, charges involved. Of course, we'll get that information to you as we get it. But as part of this, uh, likely the 64 eastbound exit ramp onto J. Clyde Morris Boulevard completely blocked off there. On the south side in Chesapeake, still watching a crash here on 64 East, right by Deep Creek Boulevard as you travel toward the Bowers Hill interchange. Just a shoulder is blocked off. Uh, not many delays anymore because of that. Guys? Madison, thank you. Our time now 702. Today, with one week to go until the next president is inaugurated, the House of Representatives will vote on whether to impeach the current one. House Democrats charged President Trump with one article of impeachment, incitement of insurrection following the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol last Wednesday. Now, the House is expected to impeach the president today. If it passes, it would make him the first American president to be impeached twice. Unlike the last impeachment, at least a few Republicans have pledged to vote with Democrats. Among them, the third highest ranking Republican in the House, Congresswoman Liz Cheney of Wyoming. Cheney said the president, quote, assembled the mob and lit the flame of this attack. And the New York Times is now reporting that the Senate's top Republican, outgoing Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, has told associates he believes President Trump committed impeachable offenses and is pleased about the push to impeach him. Today's vote comes after the House passed a resolution last night calling on Vice President Mike Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove Trump from office. However, Pence said last night he would not do that. New this morning at 7.03, another tech company has limited President Trump's online presence in the wake of the deadly assault on the Capitol by a pro-Trump mob. YouTube has suspended the president's channel for at least one week. The company cited violations of its policies and concerns about the ongoing potential for violence. The suspension comes after a video was uploaded to President Trump's YouTube channel yesterday. In the video, the president said impeaching him for inciting violence at the Capitol would be very dangerous for the USA. YouTube removed the video. Until now, YouTube had been the only remaining major social media platform not to have suspended the president in some fashion. Facebook has blocked his account indefinitely, while Twitter has banned him permanently. Today, Norfolk School Board members will meet virtually to discuss the district's plan to return students to classrooms for in-person learning. Right now, there is no tentative date to reopen schools. The district monitored coronavirus metrics over winter break. School leaders decided last month they would begin phasing in students when cases and test positivity rates are in the moderate risk levels. The Norfolk School Board meeting is set for 4 this afternoon. Look for updates on wavy.com. 705. The coronavirus crisis continues to worsen across the Commonwealth. Yesterday,